Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to look at three types of calculations that you can be asked to do, sometimes relating to the pharmaceutical part of um, advanced higher chemistry. The three types of calculation we're going to look at are percentage solution, percentage by volume and parts per million. So let's start by looking at percentage solution. The definition of percentage solution is the mass of solute required um, to make up 100 centimetres cubed of a solution. The equation that you can use is seen here, so your percentage solution is given and that's the same as the mass of the solute divided by the volume of solvent used times by 100. Let's have a look at this being used for a calculation. So here we've got two questions and I'll show you how to do them before getting you to do some examples yourself. So for A, here we are trying to work out what concentration in mass percent is for each of these solutions. So if we write out the equation, we have percentage solution equals the mass of solute divided by the volume of solvent and all of that is times 100 and that gives you a percentage solution of 3.3%. Let's try B. So we are trying to calculate percentage solution again. So we take the mass of our sol solute divided by the volume of solvent that we're using and then times by 100 to give you 1.6%. You can be asked to calculate any part of this equation. So you might be calculating percentage solution, you might be calculating the mass of solute that you need for a certain volume, or you might be calculating the volume of solvent required to make a certain percentage solution. Pause the video now and try these three examples. Let's have a look at this first example. In this first example, we're trying to calculate the mass of solute that is required, so we will need to rearrange our equation for that. So we're making a 50% solution. We're trying to find the mass of the sol solute, and we've been given the volume of solvent as 100 millilitres. We can rearrange this equation by dividing both sides by 100 to get 0 0.5 on this side, and then mass divided by 100 on this side. We then multiply both sides by 100 to find the mass. So the mass of the salt that is required is 50 grams. Okay, in the second question, we are trying to find the percentage solution. If we write out our equation, we have percentage solution equals the mass from the question, which is 75, divided by this uh, solvent, which is 1,500, times by 100, and this gives you a percentage solution of 5%. And then in this final question, we're trying to find the volume of solvent that is required to make a specific solution. So we're making a 15% solution. We have five grams of solute and we're trying to find the volume of water that we need. So we're going to rearrange this equation. So if we divide both sides by 100, then we'll have 0 0.15 equals five divided by volume. And then if we rearrange for volume, we find that we need 33.3 millilitres of water. Let's now look at a different type of calculation. This is percentage by volume. So this is the number of centimetres cubed of the solute that you require to be made up to 100 centimetres cubed of solution. So the equation that you're using here has percentage by volume equals the volume of the solute divided by the total volume of solution. So that is not just the volume of water that is required, that's the total volume of solution because your solute this time is as a liquid, so you're going to be adding water to it and then all times 100. 
So let's have a look at two calculations here. So in the first, we're trying to find the percentage by volume of um, methanol. So we have 75 centimetres cubed of methanol. We have 400 centimetres cubed of water, giving us a volume of solution of 475. And then we times by 100. This means that your percentage by volume will be 15.8%. In the second question, we're trying to find the volume of water that is needed to make a particular solution. So we're trying to make a 20% solution. We have 25 centimetres cubed of hydrogen peroxide and we don't know the total volume of solution. So for this, we're going to divide both sides by 100. and then rearrange for volume. So the total volume of solution is 125 millilitres. The volume of water will be the total volume minus the hydrogen peroxide so you would need 100 millilitres of water to be able to make this 20% solution. Pause the video now and try these three examples. In this first example, we are trying to find the volume of solute, so we're looking for the volume of ethanol needed to make a particular solution. So we're trying to make a 10% ethanol solution. We don't know what volume of ethanol we acquire, and we're making 100 mils of solution in total. So we're going to divide by 100 on each side. We're then going to rearrange for volume. So we would require 10 mils of ethanol to make this solution. In this second example, we're again trying to work out what volume of solute is required and also what volume of water would be required. So we're trying to make a 20% solution The total volume is 100 mils. So if we divide both sides by 100 and then rearrange for volume, that tells us that we need 20 millilitres of methanol. If we then do our total volume minus the methanol, we would need 80 mils of water. And in our final example, we're trying to find the volume of solute that is required. So we're trying to make a 15% solution. We don't know what volume of propanol we're going to use. We have a total volume of 250 mils. So if we divide by 100 on both sides and then rearrange for volume, we find that we need 37.5 millilitres of propanol. The final calculation we're going to look at is often used in the pharmaceutical part of the course and this is parts per million. The unit PPM stands for parts per million and refers to one milligram per kilogram or one milligram per liter. There are two conversions you have to um, be used to using for this. So going from milligrams to grams and back again. So one milligram is the same as 0 
one grams and to go from milligrams to grams you would divide by 1000 and to go the other way you would times by 1000. The other one we need to know is between kilograms and grams so one kilogram is the same as 1000 grams so that's timesing by a thousand or if we're trying to get into kilograms you would divide by 1000. Here's two examples that we can try before you can try some yourself. So we have a sample of drinking water with a certain concentration of lead and we're trying to find that concentration in parts per million. A straightforward way of doing these calculations is to do them by proportion. So we have 300 grams of water and within that we have 38 milligrams of lead. Parts per million is milligrams per kilogram. So first of all we need to turn this into kilograms by dividing by a thousand. And we need to find how much is in one kilogram. So we need to turn this side here into one. So to do that if we divide by 0 0.3 we'll get one kilogram. And that tells us we have 127 milligrams. That's the same as 127 milligrams in one kilogram or 127 parts per million. Let's do the same thing for the second example. So we have 100 grams of water and within that we have 0 0.425 grams of lead sulfate. We need to turn this side into kilograms and we need to turn this side into milligrams. So to turn this into kilograms we're going to divide by a thousand. So we have 0 0.1 kilograms. And to turn this side into milligrams we need to times by a thousand. So we'll have 425 milligrams of lead sulfate. We need this to be one kilogram so like the example above we're going to divide by the number that we have here to get one kilogram. And we're going to do the same on the other side. That gives us 4,250 milligrams and that is in every kilogram which is the same as 4,250 parts per million. Pause the video now and try these three examples. Looking at the first example, we're going to follow the same process that we've looked at before. So we have 900 grams of water and within that we have 0 0.0067 grams of zinc. We need to turn this side into kilograms, so we divide by 1000. And we need to turn this side into milligrams, so we times by 1000. We now need to scale this up so we get one kilogram. So if we divide by 0 0.9 and we do the same on the other side. This gives us 7.4 milligrams in one kilogram. So we have 7.4 parts per million. The second example, we're following a similar process. We have 365 grams of water and this time we have 23 milligrams of gold so we don't need to change this side but we do need to change this into kilograms. And then we need to scale up to one kilogram by dividing by this number. We do the same to the other side. And that gives us 63 milligrams in a kilogram, which is the same as 63 parts per million. This final example is taken from past paper and we're told that we have Damascus steel and it has a mass of 1,300 grams and a vanadium concentration of 71 parts per million. And you're to calculate the total mass of vanadium present in the sword blade. So we've got two parts to this question we need to deal with. If we look at the parts per million first, 
So 71 parts per million is the same as 71 milligrams per kilogram. So if we write that out as a proportion, we'll have 71 milligrams of vanadium in one kilogram of steel. We have 1,300 grams of the steel, and if we convert that, that is 1.3 kilograms. So within our sword, we have 71 milligrams per kilogram. We've actually got 1.3, so we need to multiply both sides by 1.3. and we find that we have 92.3 milligrams of vanadium in the whole steel blade. Thank you for watching my video, I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Kim for regular updates on new videos. Bye for now!